In this video, I want to show you how recording audio works in Traction 5. We're going to talk about the inputs, and we're also going to talk about the click track, so you can hear an audible click to keep your timing in line while you're recording your audio take. And so we're going to get started by just taking a look at the setup here. I created a new edit, and I have a 2x2 two two audio interface configured. That means I've got two inputs and two outputs. Now this extra one here is a MIDI keyboard. You can record MIDI or audio onto the same kinds of tracks in Traction 5. What you record depends on how you set up the input. Now I'm not going to use MIDI in this particular video. So to turn this input off, all I do is right click right here on the input and select no input and then I get that out of the way. Now my guitar is connected to input number two. It's really just a microphone on an amp. And if I turn up my guitar, you'll see it. You'll see the, the meter there. Now if you want a larger meter, all you need to do is click on that input and down here in the properties section, there's a really large meter that can help you with recording and setting your levels. But my level is coming in about halfway, so that's pretty good. But really, I want to record my guitar track onto track one. So these inputs, you can just drag them around. I can take this input two and put it on track three if I want. I could take input one and put it on track two. Or I can take two and put it on one, which is what I want to do. Now, if I click on the track name, then the properties shows all kinds of properties for the track. But right now, all I want to do is rename it GTR1 to get started. You can see I've got GTR1 right here. Now, this input one, I don't really need that either. So I think I'll just go ahead and hide that. Right click, select no input. Now I've got a nice clean view, a few empty tracks to work with, and I'm ready to start recording. So in order to record, we need to enable recording on the input. So we click right there, we get this bright red color. So I'm gonna rewind the cursor to the beginning of the song. I can do that with home. I'll make sure loop is turned off. I have the click track turned off right now. I'll turn that on later. Then I'm gonna click the record button over here in the transport. I have mine set up where R will also start recording. And I'm just gonna play a few notes or some chords and then just test to make sure the recording is working. All right, now I'll hit spacebar to stop that recording. And you can see I've got a little audio. If I grab the cursor here, place it back here and play. All right, so that worked pretty well, but I want a timing reference. So I'm gonna enable the click track. You can do that right here. And this keyboard shortcut for that is C. You can see that in the transport, I can either use C or I can click here to turn the click track on and off or the click sound. Now in the menu area over here on the left, you can see there's click track properties. We can turn it on and off. We can also set a count in. So I'll do that in a minute, but right now let's just play a little bit and see if we get the click. So we're hearing an emphasis on the downbeat and that's an option in the click track. It's right here, use loud clicks to emphasize bars. So the downbeat on the beginning of the bar will be loud when it's set up this way. We can also set it up where it only clicks during recording. I typically will use that if I've got a drum part or something like that, or once you've got a few parts in, you can turn this click only during recording on. Right now, we'll leave it set this way where it will click during recording and playback. Now the other key setting here is if you want a count in, we can have a one bar or a two bar count in. There's a two beat count in. I'm gonna use a two bar count in. That means after I hit record, then it will give me two bars of click before it actually starts recording. So I'm gonna do that, we'll delete this. The other thing we might wanna do at this point is set a tempo other than 120. 120 is the default tempo. You can see it over here, and that's set either here or in the tempo track, but I'm gonna click right here where it says 120 beats per minute. That lets me edit it right here. So I'm gonna slow this down. Just gonna make it 100, make it a, just a little bit slower when we get started. So with that set up that way, I'm gonna play something, try to keep it a little bit more in time this time around. I'll hit home to rewind. I'll hit R to start recording. I'll turn up my guitar and play a little bit.
All right, well, generally that worked. My timing isn't that great on this example, but that gives you an idea. If I play back, you'll be able to hear it. And with the click, we can tell actually if it's in time, if this is a good enough take or not, or we can use that as a reference. Now I wanna talk a little bit about input monitoring. I'm monitoring the microphone for this guitar through the audio interface. And this is typically the way you do it if you've got a microphone or a guitar, any kind of instrument that you're miking. You typically will use the mixer on the audio interface. That keeps the delay between what you're hearing down to a very minimum or basically negligible. My little audio interface has what's basically a mixer or a button on it that allows in my headphones for me to hear directly off of the mic preamp what's happening, and that's mixed in with the playback signal from traction. Now, lots of the audio interfaces that you might use have a program or an app that looks something like this, and this allows you to set up the monitor mix in your headphones separately from what's happening in the recording software. So with this, I can mix in what's happening in my software separately from my actual mic input, and I can kind of mix those together, kind of virtual mixer. And this is extremely common. This is what I'm using for the voiceover for this video, but this is a very common kind of approach. And I can't give you specifics because this is based on what comes from your manufacturer. Now you can monitor directly through traction. If you turn off your input monitoring, which I'm gonna do here for a second, there's an input monitoring button on my interface and I just turned it off. And now at this point, you're not gonna hear anything off that microphone. All you're hearing is the guitar strings through the voiceover microphone. Now, in order to get around that, you can monitor directly through the software all the way through and then mix in over here. And there is a little lag in that, which is why we typically wouldn't do it if we don't have to. But to do it, sometimes that's called input echo or input monitoring in other programs. In Traction, it's called enable end-to-end, -end, meaning end-to-end -end monitoring. So if I turn that on, now we should be able to hear we can hear right through traction. But there is a little latency. There's a little delay between when I pick the strings and when you actually hear the note playing. And you could adjust that up and down in the settings by how you set the audio buffer size. So if you go to settings, audio devices, buffer size, if you get this buffer size too low, the playback could break up if you have too many tracks, if you set it high, like even in the 512 range, then the latency starts to be pretty noticeable. You might be able to hear it even through the microphone if you listen to the string noise off of my guitar compared to the sound as you hear it. And if I really turn this up, that will exaggerate. So let me turn it up to somewhere like 1024. and you hear almost an audible slapback echo kind of a sound. So I'll go ahead and reduce that, but in reality, for something like this, particularly if you're singing, this can really throw you off, I would turn enable into and off, so you're not actually hearing the audio pass through this channel, but it's just going through your audio interface, the mic preamp, and directly into your headphones. So I'm gonna turn that back on. then I've got pretty much negligible latency. Now we definitely need to enable end-to-end -end when we're using a guitar amp simulator. And I'll cover that in a later video. And we also will use it for MIDI with virtual instruments. We have to have that turned on. But for normal vocal and instrument recording, it's a lot better to find another way using your mixer or your audio interface to do that monitoring directly. Now, once you've recorded some audio, if you don't like what you've recorded, all you need to do is highlight the clip, just click on it and hit delete if you don't want to keep it, and then you can rewind and try it again. So I'm going to just do that here. And then there's one other thing I want to show you, which is called abort record and delete the take. So I have that assigned to F4. It's a built-in command in Traction 5 that allows you in a single keystroke to say, this take is just not going well, cancel it, throw out what I did, rewind to the beginning, and let's get ready to go again. So I'll just demonstrate that here.
See, the cursor is back, ready to go. All I have to do is hit record again. What I did is I hit F4. On the mapping that I've created, the alternative mapping for the keyboard for this video, I've assigned that to F4. One other thing I wanted to point out is we're recording a single microphone. If you're recording a pair of microphones, you wanted to create a stereo input from that, then over in the settings, you have the choice of taking the, any of the input pairs from your audio interface and making them into a stereo pair. You can see right now, input one and input two are treated as two separate inputs. But if we click on input one and then down here, click treat as stereo pair, you'll see that that becomes basically a stereo pair. Then back over in the recording, that disappeared because I don't have the single one anymore. But now I could choose that as a stereo pair. This would be useful for recording maybe uh, stereo keyboards or using a stereo mic'd acoustic guitar or something like that. So if I enable recording here, I've only got one thing hooked up, but you can kind of get the idea that you'll wind up with a stereo clip if you do it this way. So I'll make sure I'm rewound and hit record. And you can see that the resulting clip is actually a stereo clip. Now, if you set up your interface and you see that you've got stereo input pairs like this and you don't want them, you actually want them as separate inputs, then you could do the same thing. You can just go back to settings on your audio device and in the channels area here, click on the stereo pair and then you can separate them out by deselecting treat a stereo pair like that. And then back over here, you've got the two independent inputs that you can use like this. All right, so there's one more thing I wanna show you about the way the click works so that you're not confused when you start to enable the click in the middle of a song or you start recording, but not right from the beginning of the song. So if I position at bar two and in the click track, make sure that the pre-count is set to no count, first of all, so you can see how this works with no count. It should start recording right from where I place the bar marker. So I've got input two enabled and I'll start recording, I'll just record just any kind of uh, noise starting at bar two here. All right, so you can see, no problem. It started right on the bar as soon as I hit the record button. So let's take that out. Now I'm going to position the cursor at bar two and then on the click track, I'll go to the pre-count. I'm gonna set that to two beats. And what you'll notice is that when it starts to record, it will actually back the cursor up and take a running start. So any audio or any part of the song that overlaps in the pre-count, you'll actually hear it. It won't just click off and start recording here. We'll actually back the cursor up. So just watch that behavior. So that's just with a two count pre-count. I have the click track set to pre-record -pre count and length set to two beats. If I set that to two bars, it backs up even more. And that might be a little confusing if you're used to a program where it just clicks in, the cursor just sits there, but Traction actually backs the cursor up. So that gives you a little context if you're starting to pick up your recording, say, at a chorus, you'll, you'll hear a little bit of the verse before the recording actually kicks in. So that's an introduction to audio recording using the click track in Traction 5. Thanks for watching.